I recently received a question from a subscriber that was quite interesting. The subscriber asked whether using HCG as a man to increase your sperm count and so on in an effort to get your wife pregnant may lead you to having shorter children. In this video, I'm going to answer that question. We're going to discuss how assisted reproduction technologies called ART in general are associated with poorer outcomes for children. Before we do, please subscribe to the channel, like the video if you haven't already, and comment on the video for the sake of the algorithm. Now let's get started. Children born from assisted reproductive technologies, ART, have long been found to have worse outcomes than those born from spontaneous conception, including uh, perinatal mortality, birth defects, low birth weight, and preterm delivery. Two meta-analyses confirmed that in vitro fertilization and intracytoplasmic sperm injection are both associated with adverse outcomes for infants. In fact, the risk for preterm births increases with the use of ART and increases with the use of higher level art. So the more advanced the assisted reproductive technologies are, so for example, the ones that manipulate embryos rather than just uh, insert sperm into the mother, uh, are associated with more preterm deliveries. It is thought that an altered hormonal environment in the mother at the time of conception, along with the manipulation of gametes or embryos, is responsible for the adverse outcomes that, uh, that happen with the infants. However, causality has been a little bit mysterious. Recent progress has been made. So authors have mainly been considering whether sub the, the initial subfertility of the mother could be responsible for the adverse outcomes in the infants, and other authors thought that the likelihood of multiple pregnancies, like twins and triplets, from assisted reproductive technologies could be responsible as well. However, later analyses uh, have shown that the subfertility does explain some of the adverse outcomes, but not entirely. The art seems to be partially responsible for it. And the same is true for the multiple pregnancies. Now, so far we've just discussed the, you know, preterm births and risk of death and so on, these and major birth defects. But there are some long-term effects that have been studied. Most of the long-term effects on children born of assisted re reproductive technologies have been found to be inconsistent. So for example, it, you cannot show that the infants have higher rates of cancers, for example. But there are uh, some, so I'll go through some inconsistent ones with you a little bit now, and then we'll discuss the one consistent effect that's always found, it seems. In a study on 83 singleton children, meaning that they were not born in, in twins or triplets, those born of spontaneous natural births had a higher IQ by about 3.6 points than those born from IVF, and the children born from intracytoplasmic sperm injection had the lowest IQ, five to seven points lower than those born naturally. An Israeli study on autistic children found that autistic children in Israel were more likely to be born of older mothers, as well as more likely to be born from assisted reproductive technologies. But this study didn't control for confounding variables very well. While the risk for ADHD appears higher in children born from repro assisted reproductive technologies, when the years that the mother is spent uh, childless is controlled for, this effect on ADHD becomes statistically insignificant. Finally, the really consistent long-term effect. Children born of assisted reproductive technologies, even when you control for the subfertility of the mothers and you control for the birth, the birth weight of the child and so many uh, confounding factors, those children have higher fasting glucose levels, higher triglycerides in their serum, and most prominently, higher blood pressures. So they seem to essentially be more likely to have the metabolic syndrome or cardiometabolic effects. To conclude, while subfertility of the mother and multiple pregnancies and other confounding factors may make the effects of assisted reproductive technologies on the health of children appear worse, it does appear that assisted reproductive technologies on their own have a, a clear effect on that particularly the metabolic health, the long-term metabolic health of the children. And interestingly, the more advanced the assisted reproductive technology is, so for example, a, a woman just taking a low dose of Clomid is less severe than her taking Clomid and luteinizing hormone, uh, which is less severe than her doing the IVF, which is less severe than her doing the intracytoplasmic sperm injection. The more advanced it gets, the more these effects are prominently shown in the children. If you think about all this, it sort of makes sense in terms of evolutionary thinking. If, if we cannot conceive naturally, we seem to be forcing something to happen. And so we may force the, 
the potential defects that could have happened to the child to occur by forcing the pregnancy, for example, in an older mother and so on. But this doesn't really explain the direct effects of the assisted reproductive technologies, which may be due to biological effects in selecting sperm or in the hormonal environment in the mother or damage directly to the embryo and gametes and so on. Anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful. I don't mean to turn you guys off IVF treatments or discourage you in any way. I'm considering using an IVF treatment in the future to select the, the gender of my children. But I'm aware of this effect, that they may be preterm, that they may have long-term metabolic issues and so on. I'm aware of it and I just wanted you guys also to be, to be aware of the same thing. And to answer the gentleman's question, there is no evidence that these children become shorter. That's for sure. Anyway guys, thank you so much for bearing with me. I'll see you next time.